Hello and welcome to Math with Mrs. Becker. Today in Algebra 2, we are going to review something that's really, really fun in mathematics and it's called factoring. Now I remember when I was learning how to factor, what made it easier for me is to try to think of factoring as doing things backwards. For example, up until now we have practiced a property called the distributive property. Okay, so you know how to multiply something into a set of parentheses. If you are using the factoring technique where you divide out a common factor, think of it as the distributive property going backwards, okay? So here, if I look at 6x cubed minus 12x, what you want to ask yourself is what you could divide out. What do these two terms have in common? Well, both 6 and 12 are divisible by a 6. Both of these terms contain an x. Now, the first term has 3. The second term only has 1. So you can only take 1 out because you cannot remove more than what something has. So I could not have taken 2 x's because the second term only has 1. So what they have in common is 6x. That's what comes on the outside. To figure out what goes on the inside, you divide each term by 6x. 6 divided by 6 would cancel. If I had 3x's and I take 1 out, I am down to 1. Minus sign. 12 divided by 6 is 2. The x's cancel. This is factored. And just like I said, if you think about it as being the opposite of distributing, this is something you could distribute. And if I go ahead and distribute, Number times number, six times an unwritten one is six. This has one X, this has two, so when I bring them together, it's three, minus sign. Now if you bring it here, six times two is 12. This has an X, this does not, so together it's one. So notice when I did distribute what I got when I factored, I ended up with the original. So here would be the factored or broken down form of six X cubed minus 12 X. Okay, let's look at number two. If I want to factor this, you have to figure out what do they have in common. Five and six are not divisible by the same number, so I cannot remove a number. But this term has four n's, this term has one n, so I can remove one n. So what you're doing to figure out what goes inside of the parentheses is you go to each term individually and divide out an n or take out one n. I did not divide by a number, so the five stays. Four n's take one out, I'm down to three. Plus, I did not divide by a number, so the six stays. I had one n, I took it out, it's gone. This is factored. If I wanted to check it, I could go back and distribute and make sure that I ended up with the original problem. Okay, two more like this. 80p squared plus 90. If you want to factor by taking out what's called the greatest common factor, you look to see what they have in common. 80 and 90 are both divisible by 10. This term has two p's, but this term doesn't have any variables, so I cannot take any variables. So all I can do here is divide out a 10. You divide each term by 10. 80 divided by 10 is eight, that is connected to p squared, plus 90 divided by 10 is nine. This is factored. And so, so far with these three examples, I want you to realize sometimes you can take out a number and a letter, Sometimes you may be able to just remove a variable. Sometimes you might be able to just take out a number. So it's okay, any of those scenarios. Last one, 49 and 56. Notice that there's a negative in front of both. I'm gonna take out a negative as well. You can remove a negative sign by dividing out a negative. 56 and 49 are both divisible by seven. So I can take out a negative because both terms contain a negative. Both 49 and 56 are divisible by seven. This term has two R's, this term has one R, so I can remove one R. Now I go back here and I divide each term by negative seven R. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, 49 divided by seven is seven. Here if I have two R's and I take one out, I'm down to one. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, 56 divided by seven is eight. I have an R, I took it outside, it is gone. Here are four examples of how you can factor by taking out the greatest common factor. Okay, other things when you are factoring, 
If you are ever asked to factor something that has four terms, like we will see in numbers five and six, what you use is called the grouping method. The reason why it's called the grouping method is because you put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms. So you created two groups. Now what we do is we divide out the greatest common factor from each group separately. So we're doing the same idea as here, but we'll do it two times within one problem. So if I have 2b cubed minus 14b squared, 2 and 14 are both divisible by 2. This term has 3b's, this term has 2b's, so I can remove 2b's. To find out what goes on the inside, I divide by 2b squared. The 2 cancels the 2. If I have 3b's and I take 2 out, I'm down to 1. Minus 14 divided by 2 is 7. If I had 2b's and I took them both out, they're gone. Now one trip or one um, really quick trick for grouping. You want to make the second group match this first set of parentheses, what you have left. So I need to turn 7b minus 49 into b minus 7. So one of the easiest things for me is to just look at the first term. If I want 7b to become just a b, what I need to divide out is 7. So now I come here and if I divide by 7, 7 cancels 7, I would just have a b. Minus 49 divided by 7 is 7. Now here's the cool thing. If this matches this, it's kind of like a checkpoint. You know without a doubt you did this correct. Whatever you divide it out, so here it's a 2b squared, here it's a positive 7. Whatever you were able to divide out of your separate groups, that forms one binomial. So 2b squared plus 7, that's one group. What they had in common, so that group that you got to match, that is the second group. Now here's the cool thing with this. Remember I said factoring is kind of like doing things backwards. So here is my factor, right? Think of this as unfoiling. If I foil these two, 2b squared times b is 2b cubed. Outside, 2b squared times negative 7, negative 14b squared. Inside, 7 times b is 7b. Last, positive 7 times negative 7 is negative 49. Check this out. If I move this right up to my original problem, 2b cubed matches 2b cubed. Minus 14b squared matches a negative 14b squared. 7b and 7b, negative 49 and negative 49. So what you are doing here is going backwards. Instead of multiplying and foiling these together, they gave you the four terms that you got when you multiplied. You had to figure out what two binomials did you multiply to get them. So again, factoring is totally going backwards. Okay, let's look at number six. One, two, three, four terms. If it's four terms, what you're dealing with here is the grouping method. So you put parentheses around the first two terms. You put parentheses around the second two terms. Now you look at the numbers, 12 and 15. I can divide them both by three. This term has three X's. This term has two. So I can divide out two. So I divide each number by 3 and I remove 2x's. 12 divided by 3 is 4. I had 3x's, I take one out, I'm down to 1. Minus 15 divided by 3 is 5. I had 2x's, I took them both out, so they're gone. Now I need this group to match this group. So I look at the first term. To turn 16x into 4x, I need to divide out a 4. So a 4 comes on the outside. To figure out what goes on the inside, you divide by 4. 16x divided by 4 is 4x, minus 20 divided by 4 is 5. At this point, if these two things match, you know without a doubt that you did this correct. Whatever you divided out, those terms go together to make a binomial. So 3x squared plus 4, that's a group. The two groups that you got to match, you write that once in the final answer. So here is your factored form. 3x squared plus 4 times 4x minus 5. If you foiled or multiplied these two things together, it would get you back to the original problem. Okay, let's look at the next ones. If you are factoring something that has three terms, and it's 2x's or whatever the variable is, here it's m's, 2m's, 1m, no m, you are doing what I call the multiply add method. 
If there is not a number in the front, what you need, you need to find two numbers that multiply to the last term. So here it's a positive six. The same two numbers have to add to the middle and that's a positive seven. So two numbers that multiply to six but add to seven, well you guys, that's six and one. Six times one is six, six plus one is seven. So the way that you write this is whatever the variable is. It's M in this case. This is a positive six, so it's plus six. This is a positive one, so it's plus one. M plus six and M plus one. Same thing here, if I FOIL this, if I multiply it out, check this out. M times M is M squared. M times one is one M. Inside, six times M is six M. Last, six times one is six. If I combine the middle two terms, 1m plus 6m makes 7m plus 6. It is the original problem. So we're still doing, think of it as the opposite of foiling, the opposite of multiplying those together. If I take these two groups, it would get me back to the original. So I'm just going backwards. This is what you get when you multiply it. You're finding the two groups you can multiply to get there, okay? Here's number eight, one, two, three terms. If it's three terms, it's the multiply add method. There is not a number in the front, so I need two numbers that multiply to the last term, positive 80, add to the middle, which is 18. Well, that's 10 times eight, because 10 times eight is 80, 10 plus eight is 18. My variable is x, so factored is x plus 10, because it's a positive 10, x plus eight, because it's a positive eight. Now, one question I get year after year is, would it be okay if I had x plus eight, x plus 10? Absolutely, because you're multiplying. And remember, there's that commutative property of multiplication that says you can multiply in any order. The main thing is that your two numbers are a positive 10 and a positive eight. It does not matter what order they're in. Let's do two more like this. One, two, three terms. Three terms is multiply add. There is not a number in front of the squared term. So I need two numbers that multiply to positive 35 and they need to add to a 12. Well, that's seven times five. Seven times five is 35, seven plus five is 12. My variable is x, so it's x plus seven and x plus five, done. Last one, one, two, three terms. So it's multiply add. There is not a number in front of the squared term. So you're multiplying to the last term, adding to the middle. Now here, I need two numbers that multiply to five and add to a negative six. Well, there's only one way to multiply two numbers together and get a five, that's one times five. Well, in order to get them to add to a six, but or add to a negative six, but multiply to a positive, you guys, they both have to be negative because negative times a negative is a positive, one times five is five, negative one minus five more is a negative six. So it's x minus one because the one is negative, x minus five because the five was negative as well. Now if I multiplied those two together and combined the like terms, I would end up with the trinomial x squared minus six x plus five. Okay, the next one. This is one of my favorite methods of factoring. It's called the difference of squares. Now this method occurs when you have two terms with a minus in between, okay? So again, you have to have two terms and it has to be a minus sign in between because the method is called the difference of squares. Difference means subtract. Now what you do is you take the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term. The square root of four is a two. The square root of b squared is a b. The square root of nine is three. Okay, so again, I had two terms with a minus in between, took the square root of the first term and I ended up with two B. Square root of the second term, I ended up with a three. Then what you do to factor it is you take these two results and you add them and you subtract them. So two B plus three, two B minus three, done. Again, this is the same thing. It's your factoring, you're going backwards. So for number 12, I'll go forwards again just to show you how it checks, okay? One, two terms minus in between. Square root the first term, square root the second term. The square root of 16 is a four. The square root of k squared is k. The square root of one is one. 
The difference of squares says you take those two results, so the 4k and the 1, and you add them, and you multiply them. Or sorry, you add them and you subtract them, writing it as binomials that are being multiplied, okay? Now what I want to do is go ahead and FOIL these, okay? Remember, so it's first, outside, inside, last. I know some math teachers call it double distribution because you would take this and distribute it twice, this and distribute it twice. Either, either way you think of it, you're doing the same thing, okay? So if I take 4k times 4k, 4 times 4 is 16, k and k makes k squared. Now the 4k goes to the negative 1, negative 4k. Now positive 1 times 4k is positive 4k, positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. When I go to combine the middle two terms, negative 4k, positive 4k cancels. So what I have is 16k squared minus 1. Notice we ended up with the original. So again, factoring, you're doing what you have been practicing in math. We're just going in reverse, okay? Now the last method, what we're doing here, you guys, is we're combining a couple of these factoring techniques. Now in the past, this is the factoring technique that is kind of a little bit challenging, okay? So we're going to do two of them just as a review of how this works. So I have one, two, three terms. Remember, if you have three terms, it's multiply add method. But up here for five, six, seven, and eight, I kept saying, if there's not a number in front of your square term, well, what's going to happen in 13 and 14 is there is a number in the front. If there's a number in the front of your square term, you take the first term and you multiply it by the last term. So positive 2 times negative 5, that's a negative 10. You still add to the middle, which is a positive 3. Okay, so two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to a positive 3 are 5 and negative 2. Positive 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 5 minus 2 is 3. But because there's the number in front, I can't just say m plus 5, m minus 2. That doesn't work. These two values replace the middle term. This only happens if there's a number in the front. So I'd have 2m squared, the first term stays. Negative 5 at the end, the last term stays. Now the middle term had an m. So when I put these two values in the middle, because they're replacing it, I have to make sure that I give it an m. This is positive, so it's plus 5m. This is negative, so it's minus 2m. Okay, so remember I said that it's like we're combining multiple factoring techniques, here we are, okay? Because it's one, two, three terms, so it's the multiply add method. Then when you find the two answers, you replace the middle, so now you have four terms. Now it's grouping. 2m squared plus 5m, what they have in common is an m. So I would have 2m plus 5. I need this to become this. Well, the 2m matches and the 5 matches, but the difference, is the, the difference is the sign. To change a sign, I would just divide out a negative 1 because check this. Negative divided by a negative is a positive 2m. Negative divided by a negative is a positive 5. This matches this. So it's like your little checkpoint. You know that you did this problem correct. Whatever you were able to take out, that forms a group. I took out an m, and here I took out a negative 1. The two groups that match, you write them one time in your final solution. If I multiplied these together and combined like terms, my result would be 2m squared plus 3m minus 5. Again, working backwards. Let's do this one more time. One, two, three terms. If it's three terms, it's always multiply add. There is a number in front of the squared term, so I take the first term times the last term. 5 times 9 is 45. You add to the middle, which is 18. Okay, so you need to think of two numbers that you can multiply together to get 45. If you add those same two numbers, you get 18. This time it's 15 and 3. 15 times 3 is 45. 15 plus 3 is 18. Because there's the number in the front, these two numbers replace the middle. That means the first term stays and the last term stays. The middle term had an n, so when I put these two numbers in the middle, I have to give them an n. This is positive 15n, this is positive 3n. Again, a common question that I get, well, what happens if I put 3n plus 15n? Totally fine, because the commutative property goes for addition as well. 
you would still end up with the same two groups at the end. The difference would be like, let's say here, if you would have done a negative 2m and then the positive 5m, your 2m plus 5 would have been first, your m minus 1 would have been second. You'd still end up with the same groups. It would just be in a different order, okay? So all you need to make sure is that you have 15 and 3. It doesn't matter which one you put first. You would still end up with the correct answer at the end. Now you have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. I need to group it. What do 5n squared and 15n have in common? Well, you can divide both 5 and 15 by 5. They both have at least 1n. So I divide each group by 5n. 5 divided by 5 cancels. If I have 2n's, I take 1 out, I'm down to 1. Plus, 15 divided by 5 is 3. And the n's canceled. My bad. Okay, the n canceled because it's already outside. I need this to become this. So I like to look at the first term. How do I turn 3n into just an n? Well, you divide out a 3. So if I divide out a 3, this would be n plus 3. n plus 3 matches n plus 3. On the outside, I took out a 5n plus 3. What they had left is n plus 3. There is a factoring review. Hopefully some of it seemed familiar from Algebra 1. If not, that is the exact reason why we reviewed before we jump into section 5.3. You do have an assignment where you will practice these factoring skills just to make sure that we are on track. I hope you enjoyed our time together today and I'll see you soon.